Hello, I'm Hans Brons, uh, and I'm a, a lover of uh, Scandinavian knives, as I'm going to show you. It's uh, more a passion than a collection. It's uh, I can't resist when I see a nice Scandinavian knife, so I have to buy it. So I like to show you uh, uh, through Scandinavia what I bought. Um, what makes me love Scandinavian knives is uh, the love which they make, like this. It's a very small. Norwegian knife and I bought this it, is, it was sold in in, uh, in Oslo uh, well-known uh, uh, jeweler store Anderson who sold uh, knives to and this I think it's Gunnar Berg from uh, Norwegian style but it's silver it's uh, very nicely decorated with uh, sterling silver and uh, a butt cap and small pins in the handle and the guard is like a Japanese tanto it's so well made and it's not a, a, a knife you use but you uh, carry uh, when you're dressed proper for a wedding or a church and the ladies can carry this. Uh, that's what Norwegians have. They have two categories in knives. That's a, they call it broekskniven and stasknieven. Broekskniven, the name says it all. It's a gebruiksmes. Uh, 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 it's users and, and fancy knives. But the difference is, even they have a knife which they go to church it's still usable like this one this is an, a knife from the region uh, Toten you have uh, uh, certain areas in Norway uh, which have their own type of knives uh, in the south they have uh, 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 with Telemark and Ragnar they have uh, knives which are uh, very straight blades, straight handle, straight sheath. The sheath is mostly decorated with nice carvings in uh, canvas leaves. And uh, the, the form of the handles and the, the knives were so uh, the same that they had sheath makers who made sheaths and all the knives fitted those sheaths. So you can swap knives if if they had to, and that were the Brooksknieven, the, the, the everyday carriage with the farmer's head. And when they go to church, they had these kind of knives. But even these knives you can use, they're so beautiful made, but they still have a five millimeter uh, back. So you can use it, you can, it's a, a laminated uh, blade, which most of the time were made by the local blacksmith. You can buy it in stainless. No, you have to make uh, use a, a blade with the local blacksmiths made. That those are the best. So it was not done to have a shiny stainless steel blade. It's tradition that you use a, a well-made blade. And that's the, the uh, with all the, the Finnish and Norwegian knives. They're razor sharp, you can use them, uh, whether it's small or big. Uh, this is well known, this uh, from Kaava, Finland, Kaava, from Lisaki uh, Jarvenpa. Uh, most of them knows it because of the, the horse head. And well, this is nowadays mostly made for the tourists, but there's nothing wrong with it as a knife. You can use it. It's razor sharp. It's 100% uh, functional. It's not a tourist shit. It's a proper knife. And even it looks very fancy. You can use it for whatever you want. And that's a, a very 
uh, old type because uh, this one is, is uh, 50, 60 years old and it's the same. Uh, only this is not a uh, leather stack but is uh, in the starting of the century in 1910, 20, uh, they, had, they started to make plastics uh, before bakelite came. And this is called galalite, uh, galalite. Uh, it's made from casein and formaldehyde, and you get uh, high polished uh, synthetic plastic, is it? But they used it in those days because it was functional. Uh, these Kauhava knives are famous uh, for their horse head. I don't know uh, which connection they have with horses. Uh, I know that most of the farmers which used knives uh, uh, used horses to, to transport themselves. You didn't have uh, automobiles everywhere in those regions. Uh, a horse was more common. So maybe that's a homage uh, to the horses they used. But they have it also without. It's the same kind of knife, with just a pommel and a, a butt cap. And, uh, well, for the tourists, they were not afraid to profit from uh, uh, the Olympics in Helsinki in '53, so they made for them a remembrance and the same a horse head puko. And for the military lovers, a camouflage little Puka was 60, 70 years old. Who invents the camo uh, colors? <laughs> uh, Norwegian. Uh, I love them because they like to ornate their, uh, their sheets. Uh, in the south of uh, uh, Norway, they have these sheets with a beautiful carved and decorated, but uh, sometimes there was a, a very skillful man and he uh, decorated both the sheet and the handle of the knife. Still uh, a well used blade, so you can see that whatever they make, they use it. Uh, look for the acanthus leaves. You are don't see them much, but they're beautiful, mate. Uh, they, this is nice too. Uh, Sweden. Uh, Eskatuna is uh, a place like Solinger where a lot of knife industries, so there were dozens of big factories. After the war, they only remained in the 70s, 80s. There remain only about five big factories like Ika, who made uh, all kinds of knives for, for using for electricians and, and the workers with knives. And uh, in Escotuno was Jan Bolaget, and they made uh, bayonets, military knives, uh, uh, sailor knives like this one, and they were well known for their quality. Uh, it is still existing in uh, Escultuna. There are still uh, factories who make knives. Uh, Finnish knives. Uh, one of the well known uh, in Scandinavia is uh, Johannes Lauri. Uh, he uh, went from um, a knife maker in uh, uh, Ostrobotnia, that is uh, the west side of the country near the Botnian Gulf, and he moved to Rovaniemi in 1920 and uh, established there with a, a wooden or wooden house which he brought there, and uh, he made uh, knives of reindeer horn and birch, which was common there and uh, other artifacts from Lapland, like this kuksa. This kind of stuff he made, he sold in that shop. And uh, 
uh, pity uh, that the war came and it uh, burned down in '45 in the Lop Lamp War. And uh, they rebuilt it, got a new house from, I don't know, a wooden house brought back to Rovaniemi and still exists uh, by other people and still have Lowry, Suatjit, Oi, and Shell knives and artifacts from Lapland or Sami. And this is a carved radio horn. This is more a loku, and the same is a puko or smaller, well used, with a wolf head on top, and a reindeer, a sled with a reindeer on. The puko, in fact, means knife in a sheet. It's a bit disappointing because you expect some fancy explanation, but it's simple. It's a knife in a sheet. But every if you say puko, you immediately know is something like this or or this. This is classic. But uh, nowadays, uh, this is what people call a puko. But uh, the loku is nearly the same, only bigger. It's more a chopper. If you see what uh, the Sami people use as a loku, it's uh, more like uh, this, but bigger. And you can chop with it. It's, it's a far larger blade, like this, with more weight, so you can chop wood with it. So if you don't carry an axe, you carry a loku, which is more a chopper. So that's the difference between a loku and a puko. Uh, loku is uh, not common, but uh, puko, uh, nearly everybody knows what a, a puko is. But by the way, this is a puko which my father and, uh, bought with, it, with my mother when they traveled all the way through North Cap to Finland, and they bought this in Rovaniemi. It's very rough made, but this is typical what uh, a, a Sami people make and use. It's not fancy, but it's a useful knife. Uh, sometimes they make more work of the sheet. Uh, this is the same kind of homemade puko with a nice sheet with a wooden inlay. So. It survives many, many, many years. This one is typical for uh, the war period. This is not a leather sheet, but paper. It's pressed paper. It looks like leather. It's hard and, well, it was common there to, to use it instead of leather. I don't know why, because there were many reindeers, but they made this in those days. But a typical. Scandinavian form. Always a good user. This handle is very typical for a good grip. Uh, yeah, later on after the war you got uh, the more modern uh, uh, knives uh, which had aluminium and leather stacked. Uh, this is made by Hell and uh, in whole medal and it's really a gem. It's nice made, really a user. Yeah, if you have this knife in your hand, you want to use it. With a nice sheet, a Norwegian style. This one is nearly the same period. Laminated blade is lovely to use. It's ergonomically is it perfect. The more smaller pukos, which have the very slim handle, it's still often used. Uh, it has no guard, so people say, well, what's dangerous without a guard? If you use a day, every day, a night, you get used to it. And it's perfectly safe, because there are made hundreds of thousands of these knives. And why would they change it if it has to be? So, this is 
a very nice blade for everyday use. This is a knife of Peter van Es, which I uh, uh, interviewed by uh, by Hank. You see that, and this is one of his first knives which he made. Uh, immediately you fell in love, and I bought it on the DKE show. This is uh, a knife I made myself. It's uh, made after a, a Sami knife. Uh, Sami, uh, this, the, the Lapland people, uh, which make everything themselves from wood and leather. And this uh, was a carving knife. Small blade, but you don't need more to carve kuksas uh, or whatever. So you have a small blade which you can easy use, like a butcher has his knives in an open sheet. And uh, I love to make it. Uh, I didn't make it from birch, I made it from boxwood, which is, uh, is very hard to uh, work with, but it's beautiful wood. Folders. There are not many uh, Balisong folders, but this is an exception. Uh, this is a Swedish knife from Gnosje. I don't know where it is, but it's, it's in Sweden. It's a fishing uh, balisong, so you can carry it like this. And you are not supposed to cuddle with it. It's just easy to carry and easy to use uh, with this uh, typical pre-war uh, celluloid, I think it is. But it's just for fun that uh, the Swedish made, uh, invented the balance on uh, that they used it. Uh, well, here's another uh, Sami model, but uh, which I made in, uh, in African colors. It's uh, buffalo horn and uh, tuya wood. But it's it's a puko, and uh, what am I? This was the first knife I made to get arrows out of trees and very sturdy, very thick, six seven millimeters, a razor sharp W one uh, steel, and uh, well, that's uh, yeah, nearly the end. I've still got this uh, uh, puko, which I made from a Puron Farsi blade, uh, which is a blacksmith. And uh, still, his grandson is still making the blades you can buy by a breezer in Finland. And it's uh, elk and of a uh, reindeer and uh, birch bark, a sheet with a wooden inlay. And uh, the belt loop in the traditional way. Very cheap to make, but it is very simple, but it functions. So, this uh, was the Stasknif, which you use to go to church, and uh, for the farmers uh, in Toten left of the, the western of the Lake Yosu, uh, they could afford to make these knives of silver because they had a lot of money. Uh, well, that's it for the Scandinavian types. Oh, I forgot one. This is a knife of Jonas Kalyonemi. was a young knife maker in Finland who was in a short period, very well known for his beautiful bukos. But my dovetail uh, connection from the handle to the to the bolster. And uh, he went to the army and uh, stopped knife making. I don't know why, but he was a very gifted and talented knife maker. And uh, he stopped knife making. That's a pity, because he made beautiful knives. Jonas. Call your name, please start again with knife making. 
a lot of people want them. And last but not least, like Eric Markman called uh, this man Papa Puko, uh, is Alex Salsi who makes the, mo who makes the most beautiful uh, Pukos with nice uh, tamast. And this is war talk and uh, chet, uh, chestnut uh, wood with nice leather sheets with a wooden inlay. These are really gems and he made hundreds of them and they are all beautiful. Alex Alsi, the master of Puko, Puko makers. Well, that's it uh, for the Scandinavian part. Uh, hope to see you the next time and then we have something totally different and uh, I'd like to show you some of my cookeries, uh, old ones. This one is, is at least 100 years old. And if you hold these, you really want to use them. Very slim, uh, they're called Surapati, which are very popular under the Gurkhas. And uh, if you see this as a Carda, you know, you have the right one, an old one, because this is totally different from the very small blades you see sometimes. But this is one you can use beside the big one. And um, this is a very hard piece of steel to sharpen the blade. Uh, if you are in the field, you can use this to get your knife resharpened a bit. And that's why that is so hard that you can easily sharpen this. It's a very thick back and then a beautiful hollow forged uh, steel and it's still razor sharp. You can cut a piece of paper with it. But there's uh, a utility knife from the first order. You can do anything with it chop wood, a slice a piece of meat or loaf, whatever, or kill the enemy. <laughs> but show you more next time. Always keep a sheet this way, because they have sometimes that the, sh the cookery cuts the, the, uh, the inside of the sheet and then you lose all your fingertips. Always draw in the cookery like this out of the sheet. Yeah, next time. Bye-bye.